So I've been testing out the Beavercraft beginner carving set for a few months now. And I think I'm ready to give you my thoughts. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before I show you and we talk about the carving set itself, I just want to point out that this video in no way should be interpreted as a tutorial on how to carve spoons. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, there's so much to carving spoons, much more than I could show you in a short video. And two, I'm not that good. There are people much better than I am on YouTube that you should go to to learn from about carving spoons. In fact, I'll put one link below in the show notes that I think is a great one for beginners right through experts to learn about carving spoons. Okay, having said that, I will say that I've been carving spoons seven or eight years as a hobby, certainly not as a profession, and I find it to be one of the most relaxing things you can do. Certainly when you're sitting around a campsite and you've got all your chores done and you're looking to work on something small with your hands, carving spoons is a great hobby. But it's also a practical hobby. Not only does it give you a useful implement that you can use, but it also teaches you a lot about knife skills. You can use just about any knife to carve spoons. Some knives are better than others, obviously. That's why I'm, I have a set like this. But I started out with a Mora Clipper, and then I advanced on to better knives. Okay, what we'll do is we're going to go down to the tabletop. I'll talk a little bit about the set, a little bit about Beavercraft knives, and we'll go from there. In the opening segments of this video, you saw me using some tools to cut out a blank of wood from a small piece of log. I just want to point out though that all of those tools were on the inexpensive side. There were no high-end tools used. I used a Fisker's axe to split the log. I used a homemade saw. Well, the saw blade blank I bought and I put a handle on it. And then when I got into actually hacking out or chopping out the blade blank, I used two things. I used a $7 hardware store hatchet which worked very well once I had thinned down the edge for for carving purposes and I used a Fisker's folding saw and the reason I use those things is one well these are the tools I use for carving but also they're not expensive you what I'm trying to say is you don't have to spend a lot on tools to get into spoon carving and that's where this set from Beavercraft Tools comes in. It is a great starter set and more than that it is a good quality set that you may find once you start using it you never want to upgrade. There's no need for you to upgrade. But if you're just getting into spoon curving and you want to, don't want to spend a lot of money but you still want to have some quality tools then the Beavercraft set is well worth looking at. So let's open it up and we'll take a look inside. So this was sent to me by Beavercraft for testing and review. And as I said, I've had it for a couple of months now and I've carved a few spoons with it, including the one that is not finished, but this is the one I was working on in those opening segments. And when it arrived, I, I first thing I noticed, of course, was this canvas case. It is quite a heavy canvas case and it provides all the protection that you need and a nice organizational sp space, all the protection you need for the tools that are within. So when I flip this lid over and I roll the case up, the edges are all protected from damage and I'm protected from the edges. So what more can you ask from a case? It's nice to have a way of carrying these things because a lot of the tools that you will purchase uh, don't come with a case. They just come with a little plastic sheath or something when they arrive. So having this organization and this canvas case to protect you and the edges is a great plus. Now what I'm going to do as I go through each of the knives, I'll start with the Sloyd knife, talk a little bit about it, and of course I'm going to be putting the information where these can be purchased directly from Beavercraft knives in the show notes below. So when I took the Sloyd knife out of the case for the very first time and I looked at it, I certainly was impressed by the simplicity of it, but I was also struck by the size. I thought uh, this is going to be way too small for me to use because I do have a double XL hand and I was a little worried that the small handle would make it a little hard to control. What I found the more I used it is that that wasn't the case. The design, as simple as it is, is highly effective at maintaining control. It is a simple slab side, so it's quite narrow, but it's flat on the sides. It is tapered forward and backwards in this direction. So the way it fits in my hand, um, yes, it's small, but it's still, I'm still able to maintain a lot of control. Now, part of that, of course, is due to this nice ash hardwood handle, which has just enough oil on it to protect it, but not become slippery. So I'm able to use this knife in a whole range of positions 
and I find it it's working out for me. In fact, I'm starting to really enjoy using this. As small as it is, I'm finding that the small size allows me to do things with less risk of cutting myself than a larger knife might. Now the blade is a high carbon steel. It's about two and a half millimeters thick. I'll annotate if it's any different than that. It is perfectly ground towards the tip. It does have a Scandinavian grind. However, there is a a secondary edge on it, a very small micro bevel. And that actually is a good thing in this case for a couple of reasons. It maintains edge integrity and maintains a nice strong edge without sacrificing any of the cutting ability. I find though when you're stropping, even if you start out with an absolute zero grind Scandinavian edge, the more you strop it, the more you create your own micro bevel. So it's not a bad thing. In fact, I, I prefer to see that micro bevel on the knife. It is a high carbon steel that I understood is around 58 to 60 Rockwell. So it's a fairly hard steel. Uh, it's the edge on this has worked very well for me. I have not had any head in chipping, any rolling, anything else happen to the edge. I am stropping it on a regular basis, which I'll talk about in a second, but it, the edge does seem to last a long time. It's a very simple design. It is a rat tail or hidden tang that's been pressed into a hole drilled into the ash. And yeah, it, as simple as it is, it's just highly effective. Now, there is one thing I'll say that I, I think I, I will be changing on this after this video, and that is the back edge. So the back edge has got 90 degree edges on it, on the spine right here. However, they're not that sharp. They're not so sharp as that you can use it to strike a ferrocerium rod. But they are sharp enough that when I'm using this as a lever on my thumb, um, I find that that is a bit irritating over time. Well, the fix for that is going to be very easy. I'll just take some high grit or some very fine grit, sorry, wet dry sandpaper, and I'll just take the edges off on both sides, just round them down a little bit so that it's less aggressive pushing on it with my thumb. All right, so that's the Sloyd knife. The spoon knife is equally well designed. The handle is identical as it was with the Sloyd knife. It has about a one inch diameter sweep to it. It is set fairly low and that has some real benefits. It is a right hand only design. So you, I suppose you could learn to use it with your left hand, but it's not designed for that. Again, that handle works really well and allows me to get a hold of it with my fingers. It may be a little thin right here, but I haven't lost control of it yet that I can make the curve or the arc as I work through a piece of wood like this. The grind on this again is Scandinavian-ish. And I say ish because it is uh, hollow. It's, there's a bit of a hollow grind on it. Now that hollow grind is less than ideal for a really good carving knife because um, it's not that the hollow grind is bad, it's what happens back here, this transition to the flat part. There's an edge right here. Now that's not uncommon. A lot of the production knives are going to have this. Even my Mora's had something very similar. But what I find with that and a, and a sharp edge on the back of the knife is that it will catch and stutter a little bit. So you'll have a nice cut and then it'll catch on the wood and you'll have to push through. I'd prefer to see it smooth right across the back so that it would move through the wood without any hesitation, without any stopping along the way. What I did with my Mora knives, and I'll likely do with this one now after this video, is take a piece of hard rubber or maybe use my strop, again lay some very fine grit wet dry sandpaper on it and just rub back and forth until I get a blending of the metal right from the back edge of the knife right forward to or the back spine of the knife right forward to the edge. That smoothing of the transition should help allow it to move through the wood much more easily. And that's probably a good point to bring up right now as well. Because this is not an expensive set, you're more likely to make the modifications that you'll want to make with it to make it work better for you than you are with one that you paid a lot of money for. So you can certainly pay an awful lot of money for a very high quality handmade carving knife, sloyd or spoon knife or hook knife like this and you're less likely to want to do anything to it once you have it because of the investment that you have in it. So because these are inexpensive, I don't mind doing that little bit of work on it to make it just function a little bit better for me. And the same thing here. I'm probably going to break the edges on these just so it's a little easier on my thumb. All right, the one more tool in the set is a chip knife. Now, I'll be honest, 
I don't know a lot about chip carving. Uh, I've started to dabble in it now. I haven't done much in the past. So it was nice to see this in, this, in, in the kit because I don't know that I would have bought one on my own. So now I can start learning how to chip curve and actually put some nice detail or maybe be a little bit more creative and curving figurines. But uh, again, same ash wood handle, same oiling on it, same grippiness to it. The design is nice. It's, I have a lot of control on it. The blade is about the same thickness, comes to a very fine point, and that's what I'm liking about it is the fact that it has that fine edge. So any detail work, any scroll work or anything else, I'm able to do with this the uh, edge of that knife. And you know, having a very short blade like that can allow you to get into some nice tight corners on a spoon or anything else that you're curving that a larger knife wouldn't. So that is a nice addition, something I wouldn't have looked for on my own, but it was nice to see in the set. Now, no less important than any of the tools is this, a piece of leather that they provided as a strop, as well as some co compound that you can use on the strop. So you're probably aware that it is much easier to keep a knife sharp than it is to sharpen a dull knife. And that is no more important than it is with carving sets. So my recommendation is, as you sit and you work with your carving knife, every so often, and more often is better, get up and strop your knife just a few times to maintain that edge. After some time, you'll get to know when you're starting to lose some of that edge from the knife while you curve. But in the beginning, if you're just starting out, just as a matter of, of uh, hobby, or as a matter of a rule that you're just gonna follow, uh, as a habit, I guess what I'm trying to say, just give up and strop the knife on the on your strop and you'll maintain a sharp edge it'll give you better cutting performance and it'll be less likely to cause injury if, if it slipped okay uh that's everything i think that needs to be said about this kit the company Beavercraft Tools is based in the Ukraine and they are dedicated to designing and producing quality cutting tools at a reasonable price and I've noted of late that they have added to their line of tools so they have quite a few things now gouges different spoon knives different length knives they have a lot of different things to look at and as I mentioned in the beginning I will put the information in the show notes below where you can uh, find the Beavercraft knives, not only their web presence, but also a YouTube, YouTube channel that they use to demonstrate a lot of carving skills. So I have quite a bit of work left to do to get this knife finished to the point where I think it is usable. I'm not quite at the skill level yet where I can finish it without using sandpaper, unless I don't mind that little bit of a rougher uh, naturalized look, which you know, I may leave this one. It's, it's turning out okay. I just have to work a little bit more. And I'll be happy to use, continue to use the Beavercraft carving tools to do that work with. All right. If you have any questions about this carving set or anything else, please put them in the comments section below. And as I mentioned, I'll leave the links where you can find out more about Beavercraft tools in the, in the show notes below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.